when night has fallen and fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up, cause you won't give up on me. Promises to me. Now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. For 
attention eyes on you you hold all my affection always you forever i will keep my eyes on you oh, eyes on you you hold all my attention Nothing compares, nothing comes close to you No one can know the depths of my soul like you Nothing compares, nothing comes close to you No one can know the depths of my soul like you Good morning, Legacy Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you're doing well and that you are both safe and healthy during these difficult quarantine times. Uh, we ask here, Legacy, if you may please continue to be faithful with your tithes and your offerings today so that we may be able to utilize what God has given us to reach out to the community and to expand his kingdom. And so if you may please join me in a quick word of prayer as we bless the offering and the tithe today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that we are able to give today, Father God, so we may be able to expand your kingdom, Lord, and help those in need, Father God. Lord, I pray you please continue to bless the gift and the giver, Father God. And Lord, that we may never forget how important it is to give, Lord, and to be able to use these gifts for your glory. In your name I pray, amen. God bless you, church. Enjoy the service. Well, hey there, and welcome to church. My name is Kyle Papado. I'm the pastor of Legacy Church, and I want to welcome you to our online worship experience. Thanks for being with us today. Hey, if you're new with us, would you do me a quick favor and fill out the connection card at legacychurch.online slash connect. We just want to get to know you a little bit better and, 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 and hang out with you. But today, I have a good friend of mine with me. This is Pastor Ron Bloom of Mission Church in Santa Clarita. How are you guys? <laughs> this is already going awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we just want to talk about, man, what does the new normal of church look like? Is there a normal? Should there be a normal? So, Ron, help us out. Um, Kyle and I were talking in the last week or so and, and just about this idea. Uh, we keep hearing from our, our officials, pundits, people speaking about social issues, about this whole idea of new normal. Mm -hmm. And um, we got to laughing a little bit, even on the phone. And uh, Kyle said something to me, and it just it, it struck a nerve this week. And he said, don't forget this started with a guy raising from the dead. So this has never been what the world would say was normal. Right. And so we started just kind of bouncing off of each other a little bit, not to gripe about the 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 situation that's that's not what we're here to do but to really talk about where this is going and kind of what defines us as as a church so um what and how can we better execute yeah. that vision of yeah. each of our churches yeah exactly and again for for those of you that are that are from my church you guys have met Kyle before and and again they just launched Legacy Church it's been awesome but what a strange transition to launch a church Ooh. and then be told oh wait a minute you can't have public services right now it's going to yeah. be really weird for you so tell us a little bit about just you know again before we get in this, what, how have you guys been wrestling with this and dealing with it? What's it look like right now? Yeah, so we launched January fifth, um, and we had ten weeks of services, uh, which was just long enough for us to like start feeling comfortable in the space with our gear and 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 start building a a bigger team. And then when COVID hit, man, it was like, okay, how do we? How do we pivot immediately? Luckily, the Lord had spoken to us and our team and said, hey, like focus on an online church. Like that's going to be the next step is make sure you have the capability to do online services. And then when it did happen, it was just so natural to transition. I mean, none of us are really excited to stay this way forever, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but we're really excited to see what God's doing. And God has just been like blowing out the doors 
uh, over the last couple of months being in sheltered in place and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. So and you have a lot of young people at the church. I mean, what's your what's your demographic that you're? Yeah, so we've right actually now? got a pretty good mix. Um, we have quite a big representation from Vanguard University, uh-huh. and then we've got a, a pretty good core from Tustin with you know families and and couples yeah. and stuff like that. That's the way. Uh, again, so those of you that were at our church early on, that's the way we started out. Is myself and Stephanie, and then uh, a lot of folks really under the age of thirty-five, yeah. uh, maybe even college age. And mm-hmm. so there was a, a lean time there in the beginning, you know, where we were Stephanie and I were the primary uh, uh, tithers. I, I'm not saying that people weren't tithing. I'm just saying that the bulk of that tithe kind of came from Stephanie and I sure. because uh, we we had been a little bit more established at that point. And and so I can imagine that's probably been a little bit tough. But you also have a, a lot of people that want to work hard and want to mm-hmm. serve. And mm-hmm. so um, Kyle said something the other day that, again, I just it really sparked in me about the difference between uh, being asked to not go to a service, but again, that not mean you can't, meaning you can't serve. Right? Well, Hebrews, Hebrews says, don't forsake the gathering. It doesn't say don't forsake the service. Yeah. Right, so we've just decided, hey, we're gonna we're gonna continue to serve people in this time. We'll be respectful of the laws of our land, so that we're not like getting anybody's feathers in a wad. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we also want to help our community. Yeah, like practically, we want to deliver food, we want to deliver goods, we want to pray with people, and so that's what we've been doing, and we're gonna continue to ramp it up. Yeah. So I, I know for me, even this morning, as we were we were kind of thinking about this over the last couple of days, and 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 thinking about this idea of who the church is, I really got taken back to, I felt like the Lord was taking me back to this place where, how was the church born? Mm-hmm. Uh, was the church born in a, in an easier time? Were there difficulties then? Well, obviously, if you know Scripture at all, of course there were. That's a silly question. Um, but then just to, to look at those for a second, and I just want to I just want to uh, uh, talk to you about just a few spots here. And, and for one, again, we're coming up uh, next Sunday... Next Sunday will be Pentecost Sunday, and, and we day. celebrate Pentecost. Yeah. We celebrate, uh, as those of you that are afraid of that word and you're afraid I'm about to start speaking in tongues, I will hold on for now. Um, but but it's, it's about the Let birth it rip, of... man. I don't care. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's about thing. the birth of the church. You know, it's about the Holy Spirit coming and, and the church launching, the yeah. church launching. And so, again, uh, coming up next weekend, we've got that. But I just want to refer back to for a second what was going on the morning of the very first, uh, again, Pentecost, uh, where the church launched. And it says this in in Acts 2, at verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together Mm -hmm. in one place. And to me, that just uh, immediately speaks of the unity, and not just the the fact that we're in a location, but that we're in one heart, we're in one mind, we're heading one direction. We all have a a hand on this, and we've committed to this, because what we see, if you read down in Acts 2, is is that by the end of the day, uh, these folks have committed themselves to the apostles' teaching, they've committed themselves to eat together, share meals together, to pray together, to worship together. They've, They've They've committed themselves to be a church, and their community begins to benefit from that. Yeah. Certainly the church grows. I mean, what an amazing day. There's 3,000 people. I know. Uh, wouldn't that be awesome? What would you do if 3,000 people came to Legacy? You know, The day we, we get to open up, the day you get to have your first public service again, what, what would that be like? I... I... Lord, let speechless. it be. <laughs> I don't, I've never I don't seen know, him but speechless. <laughs> Prep us for that. I love that it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were together. It wasn't like the day of Pentecost came and then they got together. Yeah, yeah. They were already together. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that speaks to more than just the physicality yeah. uh, of being in the same location. I think it's them being one heart, one mind, after the kingdom. Um, that's, that's one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, and and again in in the unity, you got to see this. These people could have chosen to be anywhere else. They could have uh, again, they all had their own goals, mm-hmm. they all had their own dreams, their own aspirations. Jesus' own mother is is counted as being one of those people. His brothers, again, at some point uh, before we see in scripture, they thought Jesus was nuts. Yeah. This whole thing was crazy, and so now they are counted among those that are believers and now waiting for this power to come from the Father, and it's super cool and and so I just it's something that really spoke 
joke. I'm just going to lay down a couple things, and we're going to you know kind of mix it up a little bit more. Kyle and I both have have been in the assemblies of God over the years and done all the camps, and you've done worship, and I've done worship, yeah. and and it's been really cool. I'm a little bit older than Kyle, and and I got a lot more hair at least at this point. All right. You know, Anybody that uh, knows a barber that is willing to please uh, <laughs> just say like, careful in yeah, quarantine. I'm yeah, catching up careful, to you real yeah. quick. <laughs> so, but we've done a lot of those things over the years, and and I was actually ministering up at um, up at a camp uh, with some of the guys on my worship team one time, and it was really super sweet to see the way God was moving. Mm. And in that community, I had never noticed it. It just was a. a a normal way of doing business for us. It was that, hey, if you need something and I have it, take sure, mine. Sure, sure. If, if you need an instrument and I have one, please take mine. If you, if you need a vehicle to move something and I have it, please take mine. And everybody was, was very much like that. And so when we would go to minister, um, we would see God's power fall in amazing ways yeah. and lives change. Uh, you know, in, in just um, amazing and powerful ways. And as we were wrapping up a particular weekend, um, I had a, 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 a female youth pastor, was a great gal. She walked up to me and she said something that I've watched live out in, in this ministry right here. Uh, she said, just, I want you to read these couple verses. And of course I've read them, but I never really thought, you know, like, oh yeah. my gosh, that's the pattern, sure, you know, sure. that kind of thing. And so I want to read those this morning. And, and again, uh, then we'll just jump into kind of bouncing about how a church can look if, yeah, what if we really did this? And, and so this is what it says again in Acts 4. We've only moved forward two, two chapters, right? <laughs> the, the, the church is still incredibly young and having this amazing impact. This, this is uh, uh, not an easy environment, and, and amazing, miraculous things are happening. And so in, in Acts 4 at 32, it says, all the believers, so again, we've got that unity, all the believers were in one heart and mind. Mm-hmm. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. Right. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. And, and I, I, you hear me emphasizing that. I just I, something that's really jumping out at me too. It's not about a pastor doing all these things. It's not even about an apostle doing all right. these things. Right. It's an all thing. It's right. it's they're all doing this. Well, and I would, if I can interject there, I I think we've tried to make a very strong distinction in our church that my job as the pastor is to equip the saints to do the work of the. Ministry. I know. Are you quoting the Bible, or is that a Cracker Jack box? What are you? Where'd you get that from? I don't know. I've never bought that Cracker Jack <laughs> box before. Uh, that's scripture. <laughs> it and, is. And, it is. Uh, and, and so I think for us to be able to take the stigma off of I'm the minister, yeah, versus empowering you to be the minister, yeah, that has to be the focus, yeah. and that's what this is leading to. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and people always, do you have this happen? People always go, well, what can I do? And there's this assumption that if you I didn't, love those kind of people. You didn't go to Bible college, <laughs> yeah, if you didn't go to Bible college or you weren't right, right, trained right. so much that you don't know what to do, which is generally how some of us end up. Um, <laughs> sorry, let the cat out of the bag. Um, that's not it. I mean, it says all it's talking about these things is there was no needy per- mer- persons among them. And, mm-hmm. and from time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them and, and brought the money from those sales, put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. This is a, a community yeah. that, that just kind of yeah. won't quit. They won't say no to the next thing that their neighbor needs, the next thing that the Lord is, is, is showing them there's a need for. And, and what's super amazing to me is that there's this connection in the releasing of God's power. Mm-hmm in the releasing of the Spirit, and in people getting saved en masse, yeah. because people have stopped living for themselves and began to live for the Lord. And so tell me about you know, anything that's been going on well, I mean, we we with tell guys, yeah. we tell our people and and legacy. You know this. Like, we want to live open handed. We want to be a life giving place. And the yeah. only time that you can do that is when you stop hanging on to everything that you have yeah. and you <laughs> let it go. Yeah. Now I don't know anybody in our church. I don't know anybody in your church that has sold their house to make sure they give yeah. to the poor yeah. during this time. But what I have seen is people who haven't been saved before get saved and they start giving. Yeah. That's happened in our church. Yeah. I yeah. have seen people go above and beyond and make sure that they're giving more to make sure that we're able to feed families, to minister to families during this time. And and beyond the monetary stuff, like let's just take think about 
the production crews right now that are working behind the scenes across America to make sure the message of Christ gets out. It's people stepping up above and beyond their day job to make sure that this message gets out. Yeah, I know our church has an incredible production team, and they have bent over backwards the last yeah. ten weeks to make sure that the message is is still heard, that people still feel comfortable. But then there's also another crew of people, and we legitimately call them the crew. That's our our volunteer base that we're going out and serving, like actually taking boxes of food to people, um, driving in a in a Home Depot truck, saying, "Hey, do you need food?" Like knocking on doors. Heard heard you might need some groceries. Do you guys need anything? So you didn't even wait till somebody connected you with a need. No, it says they were already there. Yeah, yeah, you you went looking. Yes. Yeah, you went look. They're out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. We put it up on our website. If you have a sure. need, yeah. like contact us. We want to know about that. But the reality is, it's it's too humbling for someone to put like, I I need groceries. Like, yeah, I'm really absolutely. struggling during this yeah. time. And so we just thought, okay, forget the waiting around. Like, let's go do this. Tell us a little bit about, like, when you say you're serving, you're giving out this food, logistically, yeah. how does that, like, where's the food coming from? How does that happen? So we're partnered with a bunch of different ministry partners um, and outreach partners like Convoy of Hope. Uh, they started this thing called City Serve, and they're basically getting overstock from Costco and Home Depot and Walmart and places like that, and they're giving it to the local church to give away to people yeah. to make sure that we're meeting, like, practical needs. And then we thought, okay, well, that's, like, that's really cool that we have you know, uh, patio furniture to give people, but the real need right now is food. And so I know right now they're strategizing, they're even talking with uh, the Trump administration on how to get food worked into that as well. But so we reached out to um, a couple of different organizations in Temecula, and then we actually go to downtown LA and just buy from some of the distributors uh, foods on the cheap. Yeah, and then bring it back to a hub. Uh, one of the guys in our church lets us use his warehouse yeah. uh, for a flooring company, and we turn it into an assembly line. And then we send people out in truckloads, yeah. uh, just saying, "Hey, do you guys need groceries? Do you need like this?" Last week, I think we had like <laughs> 170 bottles of iced coffee. <laughs> like, who needs that much? No one needs that much. Uh, and then we had another, like, 300 bottles of mayonnaise. So, yeah. like, sometimes it's random stuff, but it's still meeting needs. And really what we found is when people feel like the church cares about them, mm-hmm. all of a sudden everything that they have previously learned, all of a sudden the normal that they thought they knew yeah. is no longer the case. Yeah. And and they're faced with a smile. And, I mean, it's it's under a mask, just want to be sure. But you can smile with your eyes. Your cheeks push out. On yeah, you side. can ask Tyra Banks about that. Yeah. It's called a smize. That's that runway <laughs> stuff. It's my so, wife. I know, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about it the other day because we talk about how, you know, hey, Home Depots and Lowe's are open, right? Uh, those kind of things like that. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, it's kind of a joke, about, especially when pastors were like, what? You know? Um, but the, the fact of the matter is, I mean, it hit me the other day is how many people... Uh, yeah, we're working on our own home to keep busy, and I totally get that. But what if we stop? And what if we decided to work on our neighbor's home? Mm-hmm. You know, there's people out there that that have not had anyone to conversate with. They have gotten no interaction at all. And then you come over and just say, "Hey, I noticed. You know, this board yeah. on your house is is needing some attention. Yeah. You know, could I straighten that out for you and paint it for you?" There's some really simple things that people can do. But I, I think what I dig about what's going on at your church, and, and again, this story, is that believers are personally taking it upon themselves yep. to go do something. And and again, that's, you know, we talked about that at our church last week, um, when, when Jesus teaches us to pray early on, he's teaching us to pray, he's teaching his followers to pray. And he, and he says that, you know, the, the famous line, the King James is thy kingdom come. He's praying right, to his right, father. Right. Y- we want your kingdom and your will to be done. Yeah. And, and I would just simply ask the question, well, who is it that's supposed to do the will of God? And I think we get into this, uh, trap. That's good. We get into this yep. trap where we think the only thing we're supposed to do is do our best to white knuckle it and not sin. Like yeah. if we can just survive to the end and hang on, we can get back to normal. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, exactly. We're gonna get back <laughs> to normal, and Jesus will be so happy with us. Right. <laughs> but let's not forget, like the days that we are yearning for right now mm-hmm. are the days that some of the people in our church were yawning through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like are we really are we missing church or are we missing our nap time? Yeah. Are we, are we wanting to be 
practically, are we wanting to be the hands and feet of Jesus, or are we wanting to be the pews and seat of Jesus? Yeah, say that again. <laughs> are we it's wanting... not because you said it fast. <laughs> I just want to hear it again. Yeah. Are we wanting to be the hands and feet or the pews and the seat of Jesus? Yeah. Like, I want Legacy Church to be known for being the hands and feet. You want Mission Church to be known as being the hands and feet. And so we have to yeah. start doing things, and we can't wait for the new normal to come. Yeah. There's never been a normal in the Christian faith ever. Yeah. And when you get used to that, now all of a sudden you're able to step up and yeah. say, okay, hey, we're going to make sure we're taking care of our neighbors. We're going to make sure we're feeding our community. We're going to make sure that the gospel is getting out. Like yeah. you, you could, if you wanted to, get on the phone and call every one of your friends, check in with them yeah. and pray with them. Yeah. That's a real possibility right now. A couple things. For those of you that are under 40 and you're wondering what a pew is, um, <laughs> a pew is a bench that they used to sit on in church every week, every Sunday at exactly the right time. Um, they would sit on these things. And so, uh, anyway, sit yeah, and I just stand thought I should sit and stand and sit, sit and stand, sit yeah. and stand. Yeah. And not so, always were they covered in cushions. No. Well, yeah, I grew up on, on the hardwood ones. That's the way you did it in the Pentecostal church. So, um, that was, it was more That's why spiritual. they had worship for so long. Yeah. So yeah. you stand up. <laughs> I know, um, again, uh, last week is, is, as we were, uh, I, I preached about this and then we had, I had several conversations with people mm -hmm. during the week again, uh, as to, this is this is our moment, yeah. And I, I think that's one thing we might be missing. And hmm. you could get really, um, you could get angry, um, and 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 rightfully so. Some of this stuff. Again, I talked about some stuff last week that was super frustrating, and and not right, and and is not the normal, and it cannot be the normal. Yeah, we're all good with that. But the idea then it has to transition to then, then this is our opportunity. Yeah. And and what is how are we going to take advantage of? this opportunity um, and and what are we going to do because uh, as, as much as you know we laugh I, I, I hear it a lot people are talking about end times right yeah, yeah. you know and and all the things that we won't get into it today but but <laughs> Thank all you. the things that people are saying you know it's the end times and I remind people all the time uh, on on the day of Pentecost I just referred to that a minute ago yeah Peter said Peter said it was the last days and that was 2,000 years ago. So we, yeah, if you think we're in the end times, ding, 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 you get the gold star. You know, yeah. it, we are. Yeah. So, but the church has been born into this place that's called the end times. And it is an incredible opportunity to see yeah. the grace of God moving, the power right. of God moving through the church. And so what is our opportunity? And, and I think sometimes... Um, I, I talked to a gal in my church this morning. It was super cool. Yeah. She told me, uh, she called me at eight o'clock this morning. And, Ooh, don't and call she, me at eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and she told me that she had, had, had gone by a gal she'd seen walking down the street. Um, uh, again, had looked like she had some trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, she'd driven by her many times and just straight up stopped and, and, and said, Hey, and she engaged her. Can I pray for you? Yeah. That's good. And the, and the person said, of, of course. And so she stopped and prayed for her. She took care of her a little bit. And she said she'd check in on her every time she saw her. She would do this. And, and, and I was like, first of all, wow. Because I, you know, I don't know if you were raised this way, but I was raised with my mom telling me to not pick up hitchhikers. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And, and, and it's like, oh my gosh, you don't know what could happen. Don't pick up a, a hitchhiker. Safety right. is our highest priority. Yeah, yeah. But, but the problem is, as Christians, safety is not our highest priority. Or a right. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Say that again. It's not even a right. Yeah, it's, it's not. Jesus literally said, it would be better that you have a cross with you so that you can nail yourself to it. Yeah, yeah. And so this idea that we were born, again, uh, as, he, as he gives the Great Commission, we are born into a life of service mm -hmm. uh, as, as believers. The day we're born again, we're born into this life of service, filled with the Holy Spirit on purpose. And here we've been given the, the greatest power in the universe. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the greatest power that's ever been known now resides in us. Yeah. Yeah. And again, we're not talking about being foolish. Right. We're not talking about not washing your hands and not wearing a mask <laughs> if you need to. That's again, we always got to make those disclaimers because somebody's gonna, you know, think that's what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. But but what would missions look like if every missionary out there said my highest priority is to be safe? Yeah. It we wouldn't have missions. Yeah, you'd never leave home. 
you know? And, and so that's something that's just, again, hearing the scal talk about this this morning, it was like, yes, you know, this sure. is happening. This well, is happening. In one of our conversations this week, you were talking with me about um, if you accepted the world's normal, right? Or if you accepted that safety was the normal and that was the only thing that we could be focused on, like there would still be slavery. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. There, there would be Slavery more. Was normal. There would be more orphans. Or, there would yeah. be like a, yep, normal. As big of a problem as sex trafficking is already, yeah. it would be so much worse. Yeah. And and that's not to downplay any of that. But if we had just yep. accepted the world's normal, that's what would happen. Versus mm-hmm. if we if we step into this season and say, okay, God, we want to follow you more than anything else. We want to be about your business. We want to be about expanding your kingdom. Yeah. Like that has to be our main focus as the church. And I just want you guys to remember that that's not new. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we're, we're talking this morning about something that happened, the church and the way it was functioning 2,000 years ago. And then, you know, even as Kyle and I were talking this morning, he goes, yeah, but it's been going on longer than that. And that's the truth. That's the truth. God's people go back thousands of years. Yeah. And they've always been in this place where God asked them to move out from where they're at. It started this way, by the way, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but move out from where they're at. He says, go from your country, yeah. right? Go from your father's house, step out of what you know, step out of what is comfortable. And he says, and I will go with you and I will bless you. Yeah. And God's people have been riding the wave of that promise ever since. Yes. And God has, God has, has nailed it every time. Yep. Perfect 10. Hit yep. the dismount, right? It was perfect <laughs> every time. Yeah. And, and it's funny, again, and we all do it. I, I certainly wouldn't uh, blame that on, the, on, the, on Christians everywhere. I sure. do it all the time, too, where I'm like, yeah, but God, can you do it this time? Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel it, too. But I think it's, it's still incumbent upon us as believers to take the Lord at His word and yeah. step forward. So that's actually one of the things that I, I shot you in my notes earlier. Um, Isaiah chapter 43 says this, I am the Lord who opened a way through the water. So he's kind of going back and revisiting his own resume. Like, hey, don't forget, (laughs) I did this. I'm capable of handling this. You're not doing anything that I can't like bless right now, right? So he said, I made a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they (laughs) drowned. Their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. I love the descriptiveness of scripture. But then he says, but forget that. Like, (laughs) put that out of your mind. It's nothing compared to what I am going to do. So what he's saying is, forget how I saved you. But remember that I saved you. Yeah. Like, remember that I'm going to come through for you. And then he says, um, for what I am about to do, or for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway in the wilderness again. I will create rivers in dry wastelands again. Yeah. And that's what I want us to focus on. Yeah. Like, that has to be, that has to be our focus because... Um, I don't want to be caught not perceiving it. Yeah. Right. I think it's the King James that says, yeah. do you not perceive it? Yeah. Um, I don't want to be caught not perceiving it. I don't want to be caught like with <laughs> my hand in the cookie jar. You know, like I-, I want to make sure that our churches are going after the will of God. Yeah. And-, and I think part of that is just us actually saying, okay, we're not meeting during this time, but we're yeah. still meeting yeah. needs. Yeah. And that's okay. Absolutely. That's a, that's a good thing. I, I think uh, I, I, we miss it, uh, that we talk about the salvation that Jesus gives, and again, firstly, uh, from our sins, mm-hmm. and, and we, we celebrate that. We, yeah. we talk about the salvation and, and even to, to, to live a better life and that, that being brought up from the pit, you know, as David would even talk about it. But one of the things that I don't think we talk about that much is the creativity of God. Mm-hmm. We serve... We serve the greatest, bar none, the greatest creator yep. that has ever that has ever been. Right? We serve this amazing, creative, wonderful, complex yeah. God with an amazing brain, this intelligence. And then, so so then we we well, if it doesn't look like it looked last year. Because we were comfortable with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. if it doesn't look like the last mm-hmm. time he fixed it for us, if our if our if our our new uh, employment situation or or again our new ministry opportunity doesn't look like the last one, well, it can't be God. 
Right, when right. did that pattern get established? It's mm-hmm. never been established. God's always doing something new. God's always doing something creative. God's always uh, adding another facet to each one of our lives. Yeah. And again, our ministry, the ministry of our church. And so I'm excited to see what that actually is in the next few months. Yeah. You know well, I mean? you you told me over the phone, you said you have been given a, a spirit of wisdom and of sound mind and power, and then you charged us, now use it. Right, that's that's always the the end of scripture. Is is he he states the problem, says I'm going to be enough, I'm going to handle it, and then he never just leaves us there, like wondering how's that going to happen. He actually invites us into that process with him, yeah. that we get to take part in in all of the promises that he's already given and backed by the glory in his name. By the way, that's an entire message yeah. on its own. Yeah, but he invites us say, into say that. that again. You don't need to <laughs> preach the message, but say that. Why does why is that powerful? Say, tell tell him why he that's backs powerful. every single promise that he's ever made with the power and the glory in his own name. So he is in himself self sufficient enough to say, "I'll do it, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again." It is just our responsibility to not look for the same road sign every yeah. time. Yeah. And he's not going to do it because you deserve it. Right. He's going to do it for the glory of his name. Yes. And he will never, never fall yes. short on that. Yeah. So that's why it's, yeah, it's a super, I, I'm super excited that you said that now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Great. Now we're going to do an entire <laughs> series on this. And so um, I know we're, we're probably getting close to, to kind of wrapping up here. And so um, I just want to, um, just give you know you, and then then I'll take a, a chance at this. But yeah. but but where do you really want to see your church? Uh, where where do you see? Do you have any vision for six months from now or a year from now? What's what's that look like? Yeah. So I I, I talked about it earlier. We have our volunteers. We got them on a Zoom call um, two weeks ago. Well, three weeks ago, and then this last Sunday as well. Um, and we call them the crew. It's the people that you see wearing the shirts. Uh, uh, setting up the pipe and drape if we're in person. And currently it's the people you don't see behind the cameras and setting up the curtains still. But we talked with our crew and said, hey, here's the vision for Legacy Church moving forward. We do not want to just be Sunday morning centric. Yeah. Like we can't afford to do that. If the gospel is going to be spread, if Tustin is going to be reached, if the surrounding cities are going to be changed at all, yeah. we have to get out and do something about it. And so yeah. we have to be compassion-centric. We have to be outreach-centric. Yeah. Um, and so we set a goal for ourselves. We want to serve, as a church, 5,000 families this year. Mm. And, and that's a huge goal. So then on top of that, we said, okay, but we want our church to grow too, because Acts that you were referencing earlier, it says he added to their numbers daily. At the end of all yep. that, after they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the prayer, and the gathering, and 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 eating, praise God that he's <laughs> he's big on eating. Um, yeah, I just love that God loves a good barbecue. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait till we get to heaven, man. It's going to be good. But... <laughs> If he's constantly adding people to the church, then we wanted to grow our our crew yeah. to 200 people. Yeah. And that's going to take an act of God, but I believe that's what he called us to go after to yeah. begin with. Yeah. I for for us at Mission Church, you know, one of the things that God has blessed us with, we've been uh, established at least as a as a, a body meeting regularly a little yeah. bit longer than legacy but one of the things that that we've uh really enjoyed and enjoyed God's blessing in is for one serving yep. and uh community getting mm-hmm. together having mm-hmm. a barbecue you know yep. again uh Jesus Jesus loved to eat with people so yes, look did. it up God. read the bible uh, it's a good thing if you're a Christian um <laughs> so so <laughs> I, I'm so glad I finally have somebody to talk to in the middle of a sermon yeah. <laughs> I've been talking to a camera for weeks and right? I just feel like I don't it's have any, I feel like I don't have any friends anymore <laughs> you know so so but but here he is he's 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 eating with people he's yeah. interacting with people so we see Jesus uh, he's a prayer guy I mean, mm-hmm. he's totally a prayer guy, and we are, and, and, and a worshiper, we are. Yeah. But then he goes and he dumps his life out to people right. every day, serving them. Yes. And and then again... Aggressively oh, serving yeah, them. Oh, to, yeah, to the point of exhaustion. Yeah. I, I know way too many Christians that are like, oh, no, I can't ever get close to that line. It's like, but Jesus did. You know, come on. You you can you can you can get a callus or two. It's going to be okay. Let's and not so, forget, he was tired enough to sleep through a storm. Yeah, yeah, that's... Jesus, by the way, um, <laughs> we follow that guy. Uh, so, but but then in addition to that, he's 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 serving and he's still having time for friends. He's still having yeah. time for community. And so we really kind of took that model, and God has really blessed us with that. It's one of the reasons mm. why, honestly, a lot of us in our church have, have felt this so deeply because that's kind of like our identity. Yeah. And and but uh, 
I've got guys that are calling me going, man, I miss pulling a trailer. You know, I, I told them, I said, well, we'll go hook up all the trailers and we'll just have a drag race up the freeway. You know, all this, we that. all drive diesel trucks and stuff. We're going to yeah. have some fun. But but there's ways that we can serve now. And again, we're looking for a building. We're looking for yeah. new opportunities. It's a it, We're not relaunching, but in a way, we are going to redefine how we do oh, church. Yeah. And so those serving opportunities, I'm looking for more. I'm looking for ways for us to do that and, and for people to put their hands on ministry and for for a community yeah. to be blessed by it. I want our community, I want our community to notice not just mission church but to notice that there is the people of God and you and me, mm-hmm. the person of God yeah. actively yeah. loving them, actively bringing God's presence and power into their life and seeing life That's change. And good. so uh, I, again, I don't know how all that works uh logistically, yeah. or wh- how it works in a building. I don't know how that works yet, but I know that's the target, is that a community community would know that there is a, yeah. a filled and empowered people that have been been set that way by Jesus himself to serve and love them and see real change come into their lives. And so... Well, and I think, I think that comes because the beginning of this verse is talking about Pentecost, and going into that this next Sunday, um, the people were hungry for it. Yeah. Like, I think it's going to be up to us, and we talk in our church a lot about being a self-feeder, like spending time in the Word on your own. Yeah, if if the only revelation that you are hearing from God every week is coming directly from me, yeah. something's wrong. Yeah. And so they were mm-hmm. hungry to hear from the Holy Spirit. They were hungry to experience His power. And, and I hope that's what our congregations are each feeling. Because yeah. uh, Legacy Church, you, you guys may or may not know this, um, Mission Church has been one of the anchor churches that has helped launch us. I mean, their constant support and and even their their generous giving towards us helped us have the faith to plant this church. Yeah. And so we're so indebted to you. We're, we're so grateful. But now we're looking forward to saying, okay, now how do we serve together? How do we impact yeah. our communities together? And, and yeah. I mean... I don't want to roll anything out too soon, but there yeah. there might be some missions trips in the future yeah. where we get together yeah. and projects that we get to do together and serve. I think that's one of the big benefits of this season is, yeah. is the church, because it can't have walls, now all of a sudden we can see each other. Yeah, yeah. It, again, we serve a creative God. It yeah. forces us to get creative. And so um, real quick to, again, Mission Church and Legacy Church both, um, your pastor, Legacy Church, your pra- pastor has been a huge blessing to not only our church, but me personally. Mm. And there's been uh, times that I get to take some downtime and whatnot. And, yeah. and Kyle's been great to, to come up and, and, and pastor and, and uh, the people and, and minister to them. And again, the people at our church love you oh, and, and love, love you guys. And we've been praying for you guys. Yeah. And so uh, please know that man. We're, we're, we're excited to see you grow, rooting for you all the way and know that God's going to be doing some great things. And so can we just pray together? Can we do that unity thing? Yeah. Would that be cool? It almost sounds biblical. Yeah, almost. And (laughs) and so, but let's just, and and, and I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to pray for me and my church, and I'm going to pray for you and your church, and then... um, we will just we'll just see what God does. I think God's going to do something amazing, you know, so... um, Awesome. You want me to start? Sure. All right. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for Mission Church, for Ron and Stephanie Bloom, for their entire family, uh, and and God, for the families that make up the team at Mission. Yeah. God, I know that you have divinely um, brought people specifically in this season to them, and and so we're so grateful for that. But God, thank you for the mission of Mission Church. Thank you that they're looking outward to their community to to be your hands and feet to them. But Father, I pray for a supernatural anointing over Ron, yeah. his family, his lead team, and the people attached to their ministry. Father, that you would give them a supernatural power to, to spread the gospel in new and creative ways. Father, yeah. I pray that you would give each one of them strength, that you would empower them, that you, when they wake up in the morning, they feel renewed by your spirit. God, I pray for um, their their finances. I pray for a building, because I know that's yeah. a big thing on their hearts right now, um, as it should be and, and as it is for church planters. So, Father, would you have your hand in that whole thing? Would you blow us away with what you are doing in and through Mission Church? And we'll yeah. give you all the honor and praise for it. Heavenly Father, we uh, expect 
wonderful things because yes. you have set that pattern for thousands of years and all we have ever seen and all we have ever known out of you is the miraculous, the wonder and the awe of who you are. Yeah. And I ask you, Lord, to pour yourself out on Kyle and Britt, their, their church, their entire yes, team, that, that legacy would, would be a, a place that, that would be like a, a flame being cast yes, and, 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 and that the surrounding area would see that brilliant light that amazing glistening and that glow that's on the horizon and draw people to them, draw people to their ministry, to every single person in Legacy. Fill them with your power, your presence, your passion, Lord. May they be people that just cannot let go of what you've given them to do because they love you and they love it. They love your people. God, I ask that in every way you give them favor, mm-hmm. that in their city, in their with their neighbors, with the actual uh, city, the municipality yes. and the functioning of the city, that they would be known and that they would be blessed, that they would have favor, that any place uh, that, that they would need to meet or, or, or facilities they, they would need to use would be open and available yes, to God, them God, with a yes, them. with an so absolutely, we would love to have you here. May they not just try to try to sneak in the back door, but God be welcomed with open arms because of who they are in you and the blessing that comes with Legacy Church being in your town. Yes, God. And so, Lord, I know that you've called them. I know that you have set a path for them and that you have a future for them. Then that is bright. That is amazing. And it it is is going to leave a mark. Mm -hmm. That is going to leave a mark that is going to be wonderful. And so, Father, again, I thank you for all of them, and I ask you to just pour yourself out yeah. in, in ridiculous amounts. Father, we ask all these things in the name of your righteous, holy, and wonderful Son, Jesus, and we mm. trust you with all that we have and all that we are. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Well, man, thank you for, for having me and, and for speaking to our church. Um, guys, I, I hope you get to hear him again soon, and, and hopefully in person. That'd be really cool. Love it. But hey, uh, every single week, we give you guys an opportunity to come into relationship with Jesus Christ. I told, I made you guys a promise that every single week, I'll give people that opportunity. And so I want to do that today. We have been talking about the power of Jesus, the mission of Jesus, about the kingdom of Jesus. And if that's something that you're saying, man, I'm interested in that, like that sounds good. I'm cool with a new normal in my life. Um, I want to give you that opportunity. So would you just do something with me real quick? Uh, the, the scripture says that if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. And so I want to lead you in a really short prayer that you can say and invite Christ into your life and begin to see life change, the, the Holy Spirit change in your life. So we just say this, dear God, I pray that you would forgive me of my sin. Those are the things that you call wrong. I am sorry. Will you come into my life and make me like you? Give me your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live the life that you have for me. Amen. Hey, if you just said that, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. I want to welcome you to the family. We're now your brothers. There's a whole slew of families that I can't wait for you to meet in person one day. But I just want you to know how proud we are of you. If you did say that, would you do me a favor? There's going to be a comment in the chat that says, uh, uh, like this comment if you if you said the prayer. Like that comment. We want to reach out to you and get to know you a little bit better. Uh, but until then, I want you to hear it from me. I love you, and I'm praying for you. We'll see you here next week.